Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Well, my schedule's changed in the past couple weeks. Now I'm going to market every Saturday and that's an all-day affair and I don't have the time to put together a Sunday video with lots of action and work around the farm because I have market. So Sunday videos I was thinking could be something a little different than the weekday videos in that I could spend some time and talk about some of the aspects of small farming that maybe don't get covered in the other videos with a particular target focus toward people who have a small farm and may have some questions or people who are thinking about starting a small farm and have questions. And I'll try and prime the pump in this video with a little discussion of how we started farming, what my background is, and some of the issues that we've gone through. I know this term can be divisive, but I'm an environmentalist. I was an environmentalist back in my old job as an architect. I focused on creating buildings that had a lower impact on the environment. and. It seems to divide people these days, that term environmentalist, but in practice on the farm, it's the kind of more rootsy environmentalism that we practice, which winds up looking in some ways like traditional farming. We do a lot of things like traditional farmers did, but with a more informed approach, I think, with modern science. And when we get into grazing the cattle and get everything out on pasture, you'll see more of that. But that is what impacts every thought I have about the farm is, leaving this place in a healthier shape than it was when I got it. So um, I think that's the root of what being a good environmental steward is. It, it, it's not telling somebody else to go do something to make the earth better. It's finding a place of your own and making that place better. I think that's the highest purpose that any of us can have in the world is to care for a place and for our kids and our family the way that we would care for ourselves to ensure its ongoing health. That's environmentalism and let me get it here. Probably a lot of you know about this and maybe a lot of you don't as well, but I wrote a book about starting our farm. So for those people who are thinking about starting a farm, this book chronicles why I left architecture and some of the reasons we started the farm, how I felt going through the first year of farming because it was a scary transition for me to do and you know there's no guarantees in life. I went from one private enterprise to another private enterprise. There's no pension in farming unless you sit aside your own money. So it was a scary leap and I go through it in good detail and there's a lot of environmentalism in this book as well because that's really what I was after with this whole thing. The farm, my life, everything. If you want to get a copy of this book, there's a link down in the video description to Amazon where the book is for sale. For the rest of the video, I'm going to talk about how our farm business works and give you some tips for starting your own farm business. So we raise chickens and turkeys and pigs and beef. And I find that starting out of those kind of three categories, chickens are the gateway drug to livestock farming. Chickens are a great way to start farming and there's multiple reasons. Number one, they're easy to raise, especially laying hens. I mean, they're practically bulletproof. We started with six, we had 12, then 150, and now we've got 400. They're a good kind of steady source of income once you take care of the upfront cost of growing out the pullets for five or six months, you've got eggs coming and coming. Meat chickens are an even quicker investment and this is a way to bootstrap your farm growth because you can get your money back on meat chickens so quickly. There's some tricks and videos that I've covered on how to grow them because they can be a little bit fussy and drop dead on a moment's notice if you don't raise them right. But with broiler chickens, you're putting in your money and you're growing them out for eight weeks and then you get your money right back. I mean, pasture chicken is really popular around here. It sells well, costs a lot more than supermarket chicken just because of the nature of vertically integrated poultry systems that you're competing against, but you get your money back quick and then all of a sudden you've got that profit in your pocket that you can invest in other prizes. Pigs come next. Pigs you're getting, if you're buying feeder pigs, about a six to nine month return on your investment. It takes six months to grow them out, then you go to sell them. Cows are never happy with me these days that the grass is greening up. Anyway, with pigs, you get your money back in kind of a mid-term fashion. Nine months figure, you get your money back on what you spent on the pigs. The infrastructure for these two enterprises, chickens and pigs, is cheap. Pasture boxes, a chicken coop, a pen for the pigs, they're pretty forgiving animals. 
The third one, and this is not one I would recommend that you go into if you're just starting out because it's capital intensive, is raising cattle. Here we are in year eight of our farm and we haven't really broke even on cattle yet. I mean, it, especially with the breed we're raising, it takes a ton of upfront investment in buying good genetics for your stock. It takes a lot of infrastructure. Infrastructure is a huge thing when you're building a farm. Fencing and barns and housing for the cattle and all the miscellaneous equipment, I'll tell you, it really adds up. On top of that, once you start your herd, you're looking at years to grow it out to a productive model and even when you get to that productive phase you're looking at three years to get your money back on any head of cattle if you're growing them from birth you've got gestation of the mom which is nine months then you've got at least a two-year grow out for grass fed so you're looking at putting in a lot of money and not getting it back for a long time as i said we're waiting eight years on our money still and it's a long-term investment i understand but i view it as the future of our farm because i love beef once you've grown your animals out and this is a question i get multiple times a day in all kinds of emails and facebook things and how do I butcher my stock legally there's three different avenues for for butchering and there's a lot of nuance to it the first is on farm you have that option in the US you can butcher on farm the second is what's called custom exempt processing and a custom exempt processor has a license from the state or the federal government and can butcher your stock but it has to go directly to the person that will consume it after it's butchered. So you can't take it to the farmer's market and just sell it to anybody. Technically, you have to sell that stock before it goes to the butcher and then the customer picks it up at the butcher. This is a good option if you're selling half animals, whole animals, cows and pigs. You can also send chickens and other poultry to a custom exempt processor. I think it's called a, I can't even remember the number, but there are a few around here. People take their poultry to them, they butcher them, the farm can then sell those chickens or other poultry at farmer's market or directly from the farm to other consumers. I think they can sell at grocery stores, but I'm not sure about that because we don't do this route. So that's the second classification. The third classification is kind of the Cadillac one with the most freedom for the farmer, and that's USDA processing. These are facilities that have a USDA inspector on site at least part of the time. They're employed by the federal government, and they inspect the meat. When you have your meat done that way, it gets a USDA stamp on the package and on the carcass as well. You can sell that meat any place. It can cross state lines. You can sell it at farmer's market. You can sell it to restaurants, supermarkets. We have our beef and pork done that way at a USDA processor. We do not utilize a custom exempt processor for beef and pork because we do not do halves and holes anymore. We just sell by the cut at farmer's market and from the farm. We do not have our poultry butchered at a custom exempt processor because of this first category that I covered, which is on-farm butchering. Across the country, you can use what's called the USDA Small Farm Poultry Processing Exemption. And if you, <laughs> I'll lay that out on the screen. If you Google that, you can get the requirements for your state. We utilize that exemption to process chickens and turkeys on our farm. Now, there are a lot of strings attached to it. We can only butcher a certain number of those birds per year. We have to have a certain type of facility. We have to follow certain cleanliness protocols. but we're not inspected for that. That's part of that exemption. And it gives us some freedom in terms of when we butcher our poultry. We don't have to deal with scheduling a butcher and trucking the birds there. I think it's a better option for butchering in terms of less stress on the animal because there's no transport. And it gives us the flexibility to butcher the birds when they're ready. Those are the three categories. I hope I answered a lot of questions that I get about those. I'll probably still get them, but at least I can refer them back to this video. Oh, jeez. So you have your animals in the freezer at this point and you have to sell them. And that is a giant part of having a small farm because you're dealing directly with the consumer and it's a whole different ball game than traditional farming. I found you gotta be a really good marketer. You gotta be friendly and all that stuff that goes with marketing. I got other videos on that, but you have to start setting up those markets while you're growing what you're growing. and. You have to start small because there's no way you can know going in how well your product's going to sell. We started really small and started at small markets and gradually ramped up. It's something 
that you have to get a feel for. I mean, you have to balance how much you're producing and how much you're selling, and you, it takes a while to get the hang of marketing. We sell all of our stock by the cut at farmer's market or from the farm. We don't do halves and holes because it just got to be too much of a pain. And if you can sell everything retail, you'll make more money than parting it out halves and holes. Next thing, you got all these animals and you're like, well, what am I going to feed them? Where am I going to get my feed? That's a really common question. I have a feeling that in some parts of the country, there really isn't access to locally ground feed. We're lucky here to still have local feed mills and we get all of our feed from a local feed mill and they have a nutritional person who figures out what the proper mix is based on the stage of the animal's life and what kind of animal they are. So I'm standing in front of one of our gravity wagons and we get feed by the three ton quantity because it's cheaper for us that way. And then we cart the wagons around to where the animals are to feed them. Um, the feed is a mixture of oats and corn for carbohydrates and roasted soybeans for protein plus various minerals that are added like calcium and salt and whatever trace elements that the animal needs. The feed mill mixes it for us. They deliver it to us. I think it's better than going to tractor supply or your local farm store and getting the pre-bagged feed because you never know how long that feed's been sitting around and when I dump it out of the bag it's this funny crumbly or pelletized stuff. Now our beef doesn't get any of this grain. They're completely grass-fed, grass-finished and why do we do that? We do that because our market number one demands it. People want grass-finished beef in the Ithaca area where we are. Number two, I enjoy the challenge of it. Dexters are particularly suited to grass finishing. They, they marble up long grass. You've heard me say that a million times. I enjoy the challenge of being good enough at growing grass and getting it into the cattle at the right time to fatten them up at the end of, as they're approaching the, the butcher season. So, just grass fed. And of course, the question that always follows when you talk about what kind of grain you feed and things is are you organic and the answer is no we're not organic our beef is technically organic but it's not certified we don't use anything that would fall outside organic guidelines but the grain we use as I said is local it's GMO and that's something I struggle with a lot being an environmentalist but the problem is that you run into this roadblock where if you're buying non-GMO feed you're paying about a third more for that feed and it's jacking your prices up such that you're eliminating a group of people who could afford your product. So given the choice of supporting a, law, a small farm and keeping small farms viable versus the environmental impacts of GMO feed, right now we're using GMO feed and that's something I think about and reconsider all the time. That's our business model in a nutshell and I want to hear back from you what you think of this idea I have for Sunday videos which is a quieter slower kind of video talking about issues that are pertinent to beginning small farmers. So this is my target audience I think with this channel although lately I've been running around with old tractors a lot and doing work. That's really not a big part of our farm. Once I get done spreading manure we'll be into grazing season and it's me and my wife walking here and there and moving fences and moving livestock around. I won't get back into tractor work again until hang season starts. So um, let me know what you think and I also welcome any ideas for future Sunday videos along these lines. It'd be great to have a whole list of topics to put in because it looks like I'm going to be continuing this if it works out through the busy summer while I'm going to Saturday market. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me your feedback down below and I'll see you next time.